insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 113, Jealousy with Teens. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and intelligent co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? I am doing better now that I'm out of work. That's good, at least. It was a, was a rough day today. So how was your week so far? It's been going kind of chill. It's the last full week of school, so things are starting to wind down. Oh, well, that's exciting. And I have a lot of free time coming up on your hands then. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what I'm going to do with it all, but, you know, I'll try to at least have some type of schedule. So today's topic is jealousy with teens. Now, this was one that you had put out there with your suggestions for topics. Any particular reason you threw this one out there? Um... I don't know. It was just probably one of those things where, um, you know, teens experience jealousy. I know that I've, I know that a lot of stereotypes of mean girls, okay. mean girl teens, they involve a lot of jealousy. Okay. And I know that teens have a unique way of dealing with jealousy as opposed to adults. So I kind of figured. Hey, why not try this out? Okay, well, that's a fair point. So this week we are talking about jealousy in teens. We'll talk a little about the nature of jealousy. We'll explore how we can turn jealousy into a constructive inspiration and grow from it as an individual. Then we'll explore the common types of jealousy most teens might face. And finally, we'll talk about tips on how to deal with jealousy. Before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can get video versions of all of the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're available any place you can get a podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and so forth. I uh, would also uh, ask folks to write in, give us your feedback. We're always looking for show suggestions, topics to discuss. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, you can find us at instagram.com slash insights into things. And you can get links to all those and everything else to our uh, contact information on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are you ready? Sure. All right, let's get into it. So you did the bulk of the research for today's episode, and this first segment uh, came from modernmom.com, not your mom. <laughs> I, know you were, I knew you were going to mention <laughs> that. So they say that jealousy is, an, is all too common among teens. While it would be ideal if all teen relationships were simple and harmonious, that is not always the case. As a parent, you can help your teen cope with their jealousy, as well as the jealousy of your teen's peers by better understanding how jealousy works in teen relationships and what can be done to overcome this potentially relationship-ruining problem. While no gender holds the patent on jealous behavior, studies show that girls tend to be more likely to become jealous than boys. No one has, the, uh, no one has been able to pinpoint the specific reason why female teens are more likely to experience jealousy than male teens. It could be because girls have higher expectations for relationships and care more about what others are doing, saying, and wearing. Jealousy isn't gender-specific. 
but it is worthwhile to understand there is an increased likelihood in girls for it than in boys. Understanding this can help a parent be more proactive in combating what can otherwise turn into a painful situation. So with that in mind, and before I turn it over to you, let me ask you, have you experienced situations where you've had jealous feelings? Um, maybe sometimes. I'm definitely not like, I don't get jealous easily. Um, I definitely think that um, there were some instances where I was jealous. Um, I guess to be more specific, there was like, whenever I would see some of my friends hanging out with other people, I'd be a little jealous. Um, but that's really the only major time I would ever get jealous. I haven't really experienced it all that much. And, and that kind of makes sense. You know, as a teen, is despite the fact that they say that it happens more in girls than boys, there were plenty of times that I had jealous feelings. Um, most of the time that I had jealous feelings, though, it usually stemmed from some of one of my own insecurities, one of my own hangups. You know, oh, you know, uh, Brad doesn't want to play with me. He's playing with his other friend there, and I'm not going to be his friend anymore. What did I do wrong? What's wrong with me? You know, that type of thing. Or um, jealousy and envy can kind of get confused with each other. You know, you may be jealous of your friends because they have. Uh, toys or, or devices or clothes that you might like and you might want to have yourself. So you're kind of blurring the line between, between jealousy and envy there, but it's still kind of the same principle. Mm -hmm. So we can grow from jealousy. Why don't you tell us uh, some of the ways that we can grow from jealousy? Um, well, first, the first type of growth we can have from jealousy is that jealousy is a natural emotion and with work, it can be improved. If your teen says or does things that indicate that they are likely jealous of another individual, you can help them get over this feeling. Encourage them to communicate both to you and to, this per and to the person of whom they are jealous of. In all likelihood, they admire the source of their jealousy and, if they communicated with the individual, could have a healthy relationship with that person. And I think that's fairly sound advice there. Communication definitely does help because sometimes you may be jealous for a reason that's not even a valid reason. You may you may think that you're jealous of the kid down the street because, you know, he just got a pool. And, you know, you may find out that, well, he got a pool because his parents can't send him to summer camp and you're going to summer camp and that's the next best thing. You know, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, they also say that point out their own self-wealth. Remind them that they are all uh, they are a valuable person who can make a difference. Remind them that they don't need anyone else to make them complete and that they are a wonderful person all on their own. By doing these things, you can enable your teen to put an end to their jealousy. I know I'm doing these out of order. I highlighted yours and I'm <laughs> reading yours. It's okay. Yeah. Nobody else can see that, but I pointed it out to everyone. Yep. Fix that in post, I guess. Nah, we'll leave it. <laughs> Gives us a real, uh, you know, grassroots feel to the podcast. I guess so. What's next? Uh, next up, we have grow from your experience. Instead of allowing jealousy to be a bad thing, individuals who are jealous can actually grow from the experience. If your teen is jealous of someone, they likely think that so that something about that person is enviable. Enviable. As, ask your teen to list the things that are the cause of their jealousy. Then understand what traits, characteristics, or qualities of the person your teen can strive for to improve themselves. Yeah, a great example of this is you may be jealous of somebody in your class who got an A on a test that you didn't get. So why are you jealous of them? Well, because they got an A. Okay, well, you're perfectly capable of getting A's too. You need to study harder, stay after school. Ask the teacher, raise your hand more. So by being jealous of someone else for something that they've achieved, it may inspire you to improve your own abilities so you don't have to be jealous anymore. Yeah. And the last thing that they talk about is overcoming materialistic jealousy. 
Inspect this list with your team and help them consider how they could get some of these things for themselves. For example, if your team is jealous of a new game or clothes that someone in their class has, they could do some chores, earn some cash, and buy the item for themselves so they no longer envy the original owner. So it's a, it's a means of giving your team the ability to overcome the things when it's a materialistic thing. That's, a lot of times that was sort of the boat that I was in because, as I've said on the show many times in the past, when I grew up, my parents, we were pretty poor. You know, we didn't really have much money to go around. So all my friends were the ones that would get all the neat new toys and the new bikes and the video games and all that stuff. And I was the poor, unfortunate soul who didn't have those things. And it kind of made me jealous of those who did. There wasn't much that I could do most of the time. But when I was able to finally get a paper route and start making my own money, I was able to overcome a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. So having the means to overcome them, whether it's an emotional means to drive yourself to improve or to you know, earn the money to go out and buy the things that you want. Yeah, and I do want to probably make an important note. I definitely don't think you, um, you should just buy your teen what they're jealous of. It would be better if they worked for it because they actually learn a lesson. Otherwise, they're more than likely just going to expect to get everything um, that they want. Absolutely. You know, just handing things over to make them feel better might solve the immediate problem, but it will eventually cause more problems that you have to deal with later on. Yeah. That's the one thing, you know, we've tried to instill in you is earning the things that you want makes you value them more. So it's not just about overcoming the jealousy. It's about doing it in the right way. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take a little break. And then we'll come back and talk about the common types of jealousy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. This week we're talking about jealousy with teens. So there are some common types of jealousy that most teens face. And jealousy comes in many forms and from many different sources, but in most cases, it basically boils down to four types of jealousy. Why don't you tell us about the first one? Um, okay, so the first type of jealousy um, is the jealousy from romance. This is the most common and frequent type of jealousy. There is a sense of security in the relationship is lo if love is given from the partner. However, if the relationship creates insecurity and vulnerability in the mind, then a feeling of fear and jealousy get, gets generated. Then, there's a constant fear of losing one's importance in the relationship. Some people experience severe jealousy when a new and attractive person comes in contact with their partner. Yeah, and one of the real downfalls to this type of jealousy is it can cause the jealous person to try too hard you know you try to hold on to that person too hard and it can very quickly become almost obsessive mm -hmm. and it, it results in pushing that person away i'd be lying if i said i didn't experience this type of jealousy in the past um and you know part of it is again it's it's about that self-doubt that 
lack of self-confidence a lot of times. Um, fortunately, with mommy, you know, there's a, there's that give and take at this point in our relationship now where I don't ever feel like I'm going to lose her attention or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm a very sensitive individual when it comes yeah. to that. What can I say? Did you ever feel jealous when you were first dating her? Um, I, I don't think I felt jealous when I was dating her. Uh, there was probably a time period, you know, maybe a few years back when, uh, mommy wanted to, you know, she started going to things outside of, of the family. You know, she would go to, uh, her book club and stuff like that. And it, you know it kind of made me feel as though I was playing second fiddle for a little while there until I realized that, you know, mommy needs her space too. She deserves her space. Um, I'm not a very social individual, so I never really had those needs. So I kind of struggled with why mommy needed to do those things. It, it almost felt like it was, it was a reflection on me that I was, inadequate i wasn't able to you know keep her attention or or, or her, her affection and she was looking outside for that type of thing and then you know we we talked through it and and realized that it, you know it wasn't anything like that and we're perfectly fine with it now you know i've come to terms with it mm -hmm. so it's it's important to to talk again like we talked about in the last segment it's very important to communicate about things like this because you start to form certain ideas on your own and you impose those ideas on top of the person that you're jealous of. And if you don't give that person a chance to address those and explain, you know, their motivation, then you're not being fair to that person. So anyway, the next thing that we have is platonic jealousy. This type is often mistaken for romantic jealousy, but there's a thin line of difference between the two. This jealousy can commonly be seen in friendships when one fears losing a friend to someone else who may be perceived to be a more interesting or friendly person. The emotional attachment with your own friend is so much that you can't imagine them with someone else. Have you ever had the situation where maybe... Uh, you and a few other friends might be hanging out and doing something and, you know, at some point you become excluded from that and two of them go off and do something on their own? Um, I have sometimes felt like that, um, particularly when, um, my two friends would interact a lot more, like, with and with other kids who I really didn't know too well. Um, I would sometimes feel left out. Um, and somewhat jealous, but, um, I definitely don't think it was extreme feelings. It was just, you know, a slight thing like, I want to hang out with you guys too, so. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a similar situation. I had a friend of mine that, you know, he and I used to hang out and, you know, watch TV, go to the movies, and, and I knew him from work. And for years, you know, he didn't really socialize much. I didn't socialize much. So we were, you know, we were kind of a, a good fit to hang out together and, and, and do fun things. And then uh, he decided that he didn't want to be single anymore. He was divorced. He didn't want to be single anymore. So he started using a dating service and he found somebody and, you know, the two of them really hit it off. They eventually got married. But she wound up taking a lot of, more of his time. And at first I was kind of very jealous because, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together, um, between work and then hanging out after work. You know, we would work on the cars together and all kinds of stuff. And I kind of felt a little left out. Like I, and like I got along with his wife, but you know, when his wife came into the picture, he stopped doing a lot of the things that he and I would do. You know, we would go out on his boat a lot. You know, we'd go up, 
the the river and we'd watch the fireworks or listen to the concerts out up in Camden and stuff like that. And he just sort of stopped doing that that sort of stuff. And his wife kind of he started doing the things she liked. And it got to the point where we kind of drifted apart. But when I was in that situation a few years later, when I didn't want to be single anymore, I, I understood his point, you know, of how life has to change sometimes. So it took a little while for me to get the perspective that I needed to, to really understand his position there. Okay. What's our next one? Next one is jealousy among siblings. Sibling rivalry is, a, is commonly seen in families across the world. There's a general sense of competition among siblings to be their parents' favorite child. There's often a display of jealousy in the following situations. On the arrival of a new sibling, on being made to share favorite toys, clothes, or other items, on being shown less affection, experiencing less love than other siblings, experiencing a negative comparison made between siblings by parents, or when a sibling is smarter or more talented than another. Uh, have you ever had a, a situation where you felt jealousy of Sam or that Sam was jealous of you? Um, I don't personally, like, I think Sam probably experienced more jealousy than I really experienced with him. Um, I think that part of jealousy was more or less the factor that uh, kind of split him off for a few years um, because it's, I guess he felt that you had pretty much had a new family and had forgotten about him. I see. Well, um, and that kind of makes sense. Yeah, but personally I've never really been too jealous of Sam. Um, the only instance I can really think of, which really isn't that big of an instance, is when you two would hang out more on the weekends, but I can more or less understand it because you really didn't see him all that much and you still wanted to hang out with him, so. Yeah, we spent a lot of time. We used to go out and do uh, our gaming on Sundays and stuff like that, and we would pretty much be out all day long. Mm -hmm. So I could certainly see how that could, that could spawn some jealous feelings. Yeah, but it wasn't anything serious. Um, it didn't really make me dislike him in any way. It was just, um, you know, it, I didn't really see you that much. I didn't really do much with you on the weekends. Right. I understand. So the last one that we have here is kind of a, kind of a catch-all. <clears throat> and that's abnormal jealousy. This is a baseless type of jealousy triggered by no possible reasons except psychologist uh, problem, psycho psychological, <laughs> sorry, psychological problems such as delusions, paranoia, or schizophrenia or things of the, that nature. Under some extreme cases of abnormal jealousy, a person is known to display immaturity and insecurity along with a controlling nature. Such people tend to assume that their family members, friends, and partners are unfaithful to them. So that, that gets into, you know, much more complicated type of relationship issues there. Um, but what they're saying here is some, that jealousy is, is usually unfounded. There isn't evidence to suggest that there's any unfaithfulness. That happens to just be a delusion or a paranoia that you might have. Mm -hmm. So those are really the, the four main types of jealousy that we're dealing with here <clears throat> we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back <clears throat> and uh, i'll get something to drink so i stop choking and then we'll talk about tips for dealing with jealousy insights into entertainment a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. 
Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking jealousy. And now we're going to talk about tips for dealing with jealousy. And the research for this segment comes from em, em, empoweredteensandparents.com. Really <laughs> long domain name.com. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first tip we have is Fuel passion and help develop interest. There are people in this world who rarely feel jealous of others. They are simply too busy working on, up, on their passions. When people take the time to follow their passions and develop their talents, they also develop a strong foundation of self-esteem. As a parent, it's your job to help fuel your teen's self-esteem by supporting their passions and interests. So that's a very good point. You know, you have mentioned uh, several times throughout the show that you really don't experience a lot of uh, jealousy. But you're also a very passionate individual with your uh, hobbies and your side projects and stuff like that. So you tend to pour yourself into those things and put less stock in the things that would normally cause jealousy, don't you think? Yeah, I I'd probably think so. Um, kind of the same reason for um, romance, I suppose. I really don't have much time for it because I'm pursuing other things. So I would definitely say it's probably the same thing with jealousy. Yeah, and you know, the same thing with me when I was in high school with, with romance. Between my schoolwork and my uh, hanging out with my friends and working... I never had the time for it either. Uh, but I think that probably fed into any jealousy that I did have because what little time I did have with my friends, if that was taken away from me because they were hanging out with someone else, I would take that personally because I had a limited amount of time that I could spend with them and they chose at that point to do it with someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has the exact opposite effect. For you, which I think is good. That's a that's a healthy thing. Yeah. The next thing they talk about is encourage platonic relationships. It's important to support and encourage your daughter to have platonic relationships with friends. Romantic interests come and go, but platonic friendships can last a lifetime. Cultivating strong friendships throughout the high school years can have a profound effect, helping teens develop good communication skills and promoting self-esteem that could continue to grow after they reach adulthood. And that's one of the things that I think Mommy and I are hoping we see with, with your, your high school years is making friends with more kids in your grade level, your age level, or higher, and cultivating those friendships as you go through high school. Because to me, they were probably more important than the friendships that I had in grade school earlier on. They are the ones that lasted the longest. Have you given any thought to that type of, of friendship development? I mean, yeah, I definitely thought about it. Um, going into marching band and concert band, I'm more than likely going to see a lot of the ki a lot of the kids in school. And I have actually been communicating with some of the kids in marching band, some of which I wouldn't really communicate much with. Like I, saw the one I the one um girl I used to sit next to um when I was in history in seventh grade um was actually doing marching band and we communicate a bit more when we do practices. Um so I definitely think that um I'll more than likely meet other kids and I'll more than likely make friends with them and depending on what clubs I join I'll probably make friends there yeah that's good and and that's there's a lot of opportunities like the one of the advantages that i had was my best friend growing up who i knew before i was even in kindergarten he happened to be two years older than me so i only had a limited run with him in my grade school 
But when I got into high school, he had already been, you know, an established, he was a junior at that point. He was already established there. And as a result, it opened up other opportunities for me to, to meet and hang out with some of the upperclassmen that really helped me to kind of broaden my horizons in high school when I got to high school. What's the next one we have? The next one we have is, is teach acceptance with rejection. Your teen will get rejected by a romantic interest at some point. It's also very likely that they will have to watch that romantic interest pursue someone else. Teach your kids that it's okay to get rejected. Not everyone is going to love them, and that's perfectly fine. And that's a very good point. Uh, we actually have a podcast coming up talking about rejection in more detail. But this is probably where teens face jealousy the most is rejection, whether it's a friend rejecting you or uh, a romantic interest rejecting you. That rejection, by its very nature, tends to cause people self-doubt. And self-doubt fuels jealousy. Mm -hmm. So it's a very natural state to get jealous from a rejection or a breakup or something like that. It happened to me, you know, I happened to be uh, friends in my junior year. I was uh, friends with this one girl and uh, she had a boyfriend, but her and I hung out. I actually had helped her mom do some work around the house, um, stereo work or something like that at the time. It was technical stuff and got along great with her, her, her younger sister, everyone. And I grew very attached to this girl and she had a very rough breakup with her boyfriend. And I kind of was there to give her that shoulder to lean on. And I wound up developing feelings for her. And she had a hard time coming back to high school because of the group that she was in kind of rejected her because her boyfriend that she broke up with was, I guess, the leader of the group or something. And as I developed feelings for her, she wound up moving away her senior year uh, to live with her father in a completely different school district. And that just absolutely like broke my heart because, you know, I thought I was, I was falling for her at that point in time. And as a result, those feelings of jealousy and insecurity came out and, and everything else. So, you know, I've discovered over the years that I'm an emotional basket case, and, and I've come to accept that at this point. So I think this podcast helps me more than it helps <laughs> you at this point. <laughs> so the last one that we have here that they talk about is be aware of your influence. And this is really uh, kind of a cautionary tale to parents. Teens will do anything to insist otherwise, but their parents are their biggest influencers. What you do will have a strong effect on your daughter or son in ways you can't even imagine. Therefore, you should also apply all the tips on this list to your own life. Are you displaying jealousy when you come home and rant about a new secretary you don't like at the office? Are you teaching your daughter that it's okay to talk badly about others? It's that example, you know, the, the one thing that parents always have to do is set a good example. Um, our, our, our kids look to us for how to behave in the world. And as a result, I'll be honest with you, as a result, it's made me a better person. Knowing that, that my children look to me for guidance, for inspiration, for um, the ability to tell the difference between right and wrong, makes me think significantly about the things that I say and the things that I do because everything that I do in front of you is setting precedent. And if I conduct myself in a way that I don't want you to conduct yourself, then I don't really have much room to complain about how you're acting. I have to set a good example. How am I doing so far? Um, I'd say you're doing fine with the fact that I, you know, do have movie references, bit of sarcasm, and screamer technology. 
so I'm doing a terrible job is, is what you at seem to At least I'm not saying. screaming at people. At least that's something. <laughs> I haven't really screamed at technology that much anymore. Well, I'm better with technology than I was before because I don't hear you screaming as much with technology. So you're doing better than... Well, and that's... I'll be honest with you. When I see the way that you react to, to my reactions to things, it influences how I react. You know, I try to tamp it down a little bit. I try not to get as angry because I have a temper. I've always had a temper. Um, I've not been a particularly violent temper unless it it is inanimate object. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't want you to see that and have that temper either because I know that my temper has gotten me into trouble in the past. Um, and it kind of runs in my family too. So I, you know, you influence me probably as much as I influence you. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. There's a lot that parents can learn from their kids. And, uh, and I think it's a two way street. So jealousy, let's take a quick break and come back and have you sum up jealousy and give us your closing remarks. All right. Go for your closing remarks. All right. So to parents out there and to teens as well, uh, jealousy, like we've mentioned before, is a common emotion. But you can learn from it. You can definitely grow from jealousy, and you can even use it as an influencer. And parents, you are just as much of an, inf of an influence to your kids as they are to you. So, basically, you can all learn from each other and try not to spread jealousy. Jealousy is not something you want to constantly have in your life. Don't be jealous. Jealousy is bad. <laughs> Wise words, as always. Thank you. Uh, before we do go, I would, uh, again, suggest you subscribe to the podcast. You can't buy this entertainment anywhere at this point because we don't charge for it. So, <laughs> uh, You can find the audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens and the video versions of all of our show's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. On Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc., etc. I would also implore folks, give us your feedback. Give us some suggestions for topics to talk about. Tell us, us how we're doing. Help us. <laughs> help us help you. Um, yes, Madison has come up with about a half dozen topics. So we're good for the next few shows, but we're always looking for input. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at Insights underscore Things. You can get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Insights into Things. We do stream five days a week on YouTube as well. And we stream five days a week on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash Insights into Things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, uh, you get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate it if you threw that our way. Audio versions of this podcast can be found on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insightsintothingspodcast. We are on Instagram at instagram.com slash insightsintothings. Or you can get links to all those and much more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and It's Into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.